Hi everyone, this is Tony Karina, the Genealogy Coordinator of the Schaumburg Township District Library. Welcome to my genealogy tutorial that I'm going to share with you about having not only access to Ancestry Library Edition from home users for the time period from now until May 30th, 2020, but then also within that wonderful resource, I want to show you one specific database that is becoming very, very popular. And uh, reasons being is sometimes it's nice to be able to search for ancestral records that doesn't require handwritten records to look through, because that can be a challenge unto its own. So at this point, I want to get you uh, access and show you how to use the World War II draft records for young men for the years 1940 to 1947. So first off, what I'm going to have you do is go to our website, which is up here, schomburglibrary.org, and you're going to access the, under eLibrary, or actually, yeah, you're going to access under eLibrary the genealogy set of databases by going to here. And I do want to mention what I'm going to show for people who are going to access this tutorial is this is intended for those who are library card holders with the Schomburg Township District Library. If you are from another library, you will need to access Ancestry Library Edition through your home library. So double check back with them that if they have that product available, it should be under the same conditions we have it now where it's available for home users through May 30th. So click on Genealogy, and as you can see, scroll up a little bit, and you can see Ancestry Library Edition is over here. Click on that. I've already logged myself into it, and what I'm going to show you is, is while I'm talking, I should be able to bring in an image of the login screen and the pin screen that you will be accessing when you access our library version of this. So at this point in time, let's do rather than, and if you can see, I'm going to show you another thing here. This is the place where literally 99% of everybody accessing the site will go to. In this particular case, I want to make you aware of a better way to do this specific to one database that, I'm, that I would like to show you. And that is you go to the search tab within Ancestry Library Edition up here, click on it, let it open it up, and then instead of just doing all kinds of searching, first off, select the card catalog. This is going to give you an image here of over 10,000 individual databases that are available within Ancestry Library Edition. Sometimes you're actually better off searching one database when you know what it is and when we can select it rather than searching all 10,000 databases, getting tens of thousands of hits back on the name that you're searching for. So let's just do this. Let's just show you how to go about doing it. So in this particular case, I'm just going to use a few keywords that I know exist in the title, and it's draft cards, young men, are the words that you want to use to get access to this database. And there it is. And the best part of this is coming up as I'm going to show you is, first off, we're dealing with one database. You're going to see a little overview of what this database is. But the nice thing about this database is there are 53 million records in this database. So, Let's select the database itself, click on a highlighted link. Here's where it's going to get to the template that allows you to search. Now, for practical purposes here, I'm just going to show you a few searches with the, with the last name of myself, Karina, to see what you're going to get. I do know in advance you're not going to get a whole lot, which is good. Um, it's not like the name Smith or Rogers or Jones that you might get. But the template here, this is the key to know how you can go ahead and change some of the search 
screening to limit your your number of hits you're going to get as you start trying to do searches with the name of, that you're interested in finding. So for again purposes here, let's just do the name Kierna. And I will leave it at this point to exact because I've already done some checking on this. But for your purposes, you often start with a broader search term with the name. You're going to also get other names that sound alike to this. But for, for here, for this example, let's just leave it at exact name for the last name, Karina. So we're going to leave it at that. I'm going to hit the match all names and hit search. So for again, the nice thing here, we're going to deal with only 16 of the last name Karina in this particular database here, World War II draft card men 1940 to 1947. Okay, so here's another nice thing you're going to start seeing right off the bat. Here we'll give you already just in the index of names, It'll tell you the birth date of the person and when they registered for the draft. The birth date, obviously, the nice thing about this is it's coming from the person themselves who should know best when their birth date was. So if your research has already been showing you variations of when this person that you might already be aware of was born, this is a nice database to sort of confirm that what you've got is correct, or I would go with at this point what this person says in the draft registration card of when their birth date is. So let's just move over to where we can start looking at the details of this. Here is a link to get you to the actual image of what the person's card was. And as I promised you, this is the nice part about this database. It's a wonderfully imaged database of the cards in ex extremely beautifully both handwritten and size of the image for you to browse through. So scroll up, scroll down. You'll, there's not a whole lot here, but the beauty is it's pretty, pretty decipherable. And for those of you who don't ever have handwritten signatures of your ancestors that you're searching for well you sure can't beat this to have the person's name actually noted there so what we have here and you could go this is obviously at even a small amount I'm gonna leave it at that but you can increase the image size and one of the things I also want to make you aware of is not only for the contents of the card the name of the person where they resided, what their mailing address was, if it was different than where they, they lived, their telephone number, date of birth, as I noted, where they were born, and who would be the person that would always know of where they can be reached. So now they've indicated another alternative person. Sometimes it's indicated, as you see here, it's the mother of Norbert. At this point in time. The most important part here to get access to this data is click on the toolbar and what you're gonna see is here's all the things that you can do with the image that you're looking at. I always look at the most important part is the download capability. Here's where you have the ability to get this record downloaded and uh, again to keep this tutorial short I'm just I'm not going to need to download the actual record but when you download it either name it in a way that you know what you're naming this image or know exactly where you're downloading it to so to help you find it in an easy fashion sometimes I like to just download it to my desktop then I know that if there's an image there I pretty much know what it is that I do I download it even if it's in cryptic format in terms of the naming convention. So if you have the chance to name it here, name it the Norbert Arthur Karina World War II draft card and leave it at that. Then when it pops up on your screen, you'll know exactly that that's what it is. So we'll leave that as for you to do a download in. But the most important part, two of these records, these are two 
I guess, two separate individual records of this card. Sometimes you'll see a card that is that captures both sides, front and back, routinely. In this particular database, that does not happen. So we're looking at the front side of the card. Use these left and right arrows to get to the back side of the card. And that's what we're going to look at right now. So click on that. Here's another beautiful thing. You're going to be able to get not only as we saw on the first side of the card, but on the second side of the card, you're going to be able to see all of this other secondary information that was captured by the draft board card that was supplied by the person himself. So what race was the person? You'll see what they were asking for in the 1940s. What was the person's height? What was their weight? Color of eyes? Color of hair? What was their complexion? And obviously here again, this is the 1940s. This is how they categorize what they were looking for. Uh, in Norbert's particular case for this one, you're seeing that there's no other physical characteristics. But I'm pretty sure that when you start doing your own research and look through the other people of your ancestral search, like I did, I found many other Karanas that had here where it was indicated that they had tattoos or they had a scar or they had something else that was unique to them on their, on their physical attributes. So be sure that you download this as its own separate download here and now you'll have two individual images of your ancestor a front side and a back side of the card for that particular person so i'm hoping that this particular database will pique your curiosity that you will definitely want to search this database and again i suggest searching it as its own database don't muddle it up with 10,000 other databases within Ancestry here. Take advantage of going through one database, searching through a variety of your ancestors, different names that you've got in, in, interested in that were living, obviously, at the time of the 1940s in the U.S. during the time period when this draft registration was done. So take advantage of this database. Take advantage of downloading the images front and back and then be able to incorporate that research with what was described on this card front and back and incorporate that into your family tree for this particular person that you may know of as an ancestor. Or if you don't, at least you now have another name, surname, to have a question mark on and determine how is this person related to you. So with that in mind, I want to just encourage you to keep going through your research during this time um, and make take advantage of this World War II Draft Cards for Young Men database that's available through Ancestry Library Edition during the time period now at least through May 30th and enjoy the, the, the reapings of your research for further, further emphasis on all of what you're describing in your own family trees. Thank you for joining me for this little tutorial. My name is Tony Karna, the Genealogy Coordinator of the Schomburg Township District, District Library. Happy research hunting.